walks along in that journey for those of us who aren't as familiar with it to this power of an expectation and vocation. Hmm. And I just, I'll say two things and then let Linson take it. Uh, I think one is you have to understand the communal identity. Like it's just not a, and I think that's hard. I mean, that's hard for us as Asian Americans too, because we're, we're brought up in like a more Western individual place, but we also have these like strong communal roots and ties and obligation. And I mean that in the best way. I think obligation mm -hmm. can be really good. Um, so, you know, when, when my friend in college, a white friend in college said, oh yeah, my parents said that I should just do whatever makes me happy. I really thought you only saw that on TV. <laughs> like, I was like, wait, they really said that? You know, like, and and I just didn't understand that. My parents had a lot of opinions, you know. The flip side of it, though, was when she did do what, you know, she wanted to do after college, and, and it was a little bit hard, you know, like the vocation she had chosen was um, financially a little bit harder. It, it to me, from the outside, um, not being from, you know, her community, like, it felt like, oh, your parents kind of just left you out there, mm -hmm. like, in a sense, like, but in their minds, once you turn 18, you know, you're, yeah, you're an adult, you're, you're an adult, it's you, you, you know, you, you, so there wasn't like as much of the ties, like, they didn't have opinions, but they also weren't supporting in any way, mm -hmm. like, I'm not even talking about financial, I just mean, like, emotionally, relationally, yeah, yeah, or how you doing, or like, you know, like, giving advice, or anything like that. Um, I had the opposite. My parents had lots of opinions and all that stuff, but, but also offer like with parent, like as a, as a, as a parent now, my parents have a lot of, have, have opinions sometimes, sometimes more than I'd like, but they're also quick to offer help. So there's like a, it comes like, I don't know, it's a package, I guess. So that, and then I would say the other thing is, um, this is just context. I'm not going to let you Linson talk more about stuff, but like the other thing I would say is just um, survival mentality of immigration and refugee, um, moving to a whole new place, the, the pressure to be able to establish yourself and provide for your family and often send money home, right? Send, provide for other relatives and stuff like that. That's a huge thing. Um, so just two context pieces, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So like all of those decisions have to be made inside that context, you know? And, um, like, like for some, um, some parents raising you here in America meant that so much was sacrificed, you know, and so you kind of hear that growing up, if you're a second gen, you hear the first gen stories and, and you hear that and your, your life is dramatically shaped by that. And so there are certain um, occupations here in the country that because of uh, policies written by the US government, um, our parents that had, were part of that first wave, they, because of the, the 1965 Immigration Act, came because they were highly educated, could speak in English. So that was the kind of people that first came and they realized that was how they got here and how they started to establish themselves. So we had to do that. There was like no other option. I mean, you were gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, uh, I mean, maybe, I mean, it was doctor and engineer and then maybe a lawyer, you know, it was like, this is what you have to do to establish yourself in this country. And, and so like, when you had friends who were like, I'm going to get into art, you know, you're like, what, you know, you know, you're just like mind blown, you know, that you would do that. And, um, but simultaneously there, and from a Christian perspective, there's this vibrant, like, call from God to make an impact wherever you go. So they would almost say to you, you're going to be an engineer while you can hear them praying, Lord, would you use our family, maybe our children for the propagation of the gospel? You know, you're like, how could, you know, like you're just like trying to mm -hmm. work out their spirituality and their hope for the next generation. And, and built in into that also is a sense that when they get old, you know, because they've set us up, we'll have enough to set up our kids, but also them, you know, and like, we, we're all one unit, we've got all, and you can't do that if you're, you know, doing something else, you know, you got to be able to keep the family unit together. There's all this kind of expectation around it. So when you meet uh, Asian American, whose parents were like, you don't have to follow the Asian American dream, 
um, you can like say go get into ministry that wasn't a cost for that one individual it was a cost for the entire family. family like they all had to lay something down before the lord to let that person go into ministry like it was that the whole family was surrendering to jesus you know at that moment 